now. <laughs> it's that initial kick, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video. Now today we are joined with a 2020 Cupra Ateca. Now this is a car which I've been eager to get my hands on for quite a while. And a friend of mine and actually a familiar person to the channel has recently bought one. Uh, and so he's invited me along today to take it for a spin and see what I think of it. Now the direct rival of this car, which is of course the VW T-Roc R is a car which I have personally driven. They share a lot of components together between the two cars. So it'll be interesting to see how they compare, um, but also to see what it's like to drive because it's basically a hot hatch on stilts because it shares, well, like I said, a lot of components with the T-Roc car, which then shares a lot of components with the Golf R. But yeah, the owner of this car is a chap called Ollie, who, like I mentioned, has been on the channel before with his modified Abarth. He has now sold that car and bought one of these, which we were joking on camera just now, just how different they both are. But anyway, without further ado, let's have a wander around the car before we introduce you to Ollie, for those of you who didn't see the Abarth video, and then take it out for a spin and see what we think. So the 2020 Cupra Ateca. Let's have a little walk around the car before we head out, out onto the road to see what it's like to drive. Now this specific car is finished in crystal black, which if I come up close, is not actually black. It's a very dark and very sparkly blue, as you might be able to see there. Lovely color actually. And well, to be honest, if I'm honest, I thought it was black, but as the sun came out, it then turned blue. Now the Cupra kind of color, I think you could say, is well, copper, fairly obviously. So we've got the upgraded 19 inch wheels with the copper diamond cut effect. We also have the Cupra badge in copper and a load of other details in the interior, which I will get to shortly. Now, Ollie has, well, basically gone to town with specking this car with every single option available. So you had the sound and comfort pack, which I'll explain to you very shortly, and also the styling pack, which is basically the wheels, the brakes, which are vented Brembo's up front, huge disc and pads, um, and also the gloss black grills here and there. One thing which is actually quite annoying, and one thing which I noticed whilst doing some B-roll, is that this car is obviously not badged as a Seat. It's a Cupra, which is basically Seat's sportier side of things, a bit like the R um, of VW. However, in the lights, you still have a Seat badge, which is unusual, <laughs> seeing as this car isn't actually a Seat. But I'm sure you will agree with me in saying that this car is actually really rather menacing. You get some pretty sharp lines pretty much everywhere, stuff like that, a little lip spoiler. Even with the roof rails, it kind of just adds to that uh, persona. Now, you may have spotted the four exhausts at the bottom, which is due to the fact that this car has the same engine as the Golf R and of course the T-Roc car. So you're looking at 300 horsepower or thereabouts from a two litre four cylinder. You're looking at around 400 Newton meters of torque. And in fact, it pretty much is the exact same engine as ones that you'll find in the VWs. Curb weight is just over 1600 kilos. Again, very similar to the T-Roc, but of course, slightly heavier than the Golf R. And so the 0 to 60 time is around around five and a half seconds, which is certainly no slouch, that's for sure. And I think this is probably one of the most understated cars that you can buy. One which most people aren't really gonna know what it is until you kind of see maybe some of the copper bits and maybe those four exhausts. Moving on to the interior then, which like I mentioned is again, fully, fully specced with these seats, which rumor has it are around two and a half grand. Of course, with those copper stitching, which is a theme again on the inside with the Cupra embroider at the top, with the Alcantara main section, and they're almost, well, leather and carbon effect bolsters. So this car comes with a pretty familiar seven speed DSG. Of course, all the different driving modes, but of course, some extra ones due to the fact it's kind of a mini SUV or crossover. Anyway, let's properly hop inside the car. Actually, we'll start it up. We've got the stop button down here so we can see well basically here <laughs> a very familiar 
engine. It's actually going to be really weird for me to drive this because the last time I'd properly driven a car with this engine would have been my car. Obviously, the Tiro car would have been a slight exception, but I didn't really have much time with it. Anyway, let's close the door and just show you some of the features in here. So, virtual cockpit. I've kind of missed having a virtual cockpit kind of in front of me in a car, to be honest, because with my M140i and GT86, they are both, well, the M140i is kind of a virtual cockpit, but definitely not as much as ones which you get in this and the Golf R. So, there is a button on the, on the steering wheel which you can change the different views. So have a little flick through some of these. I think the most sporty one is this one here, which I think I'm gonna leave it in when we go for a drive. But like I mentioned, a lot of copper details in here with the badge and the stitching and everything like that. These seats, like I mentioned, two and a half grand to spec these. And uh, basically with this car, you can basically only spec two main things. And that is these seats and also the sunroof or panoramic roof up above. So like I said, this car is pretty fully loaded. But anyway, I think that's pretty much it for the vague walk around. Let's pop up the cameras and go for a drive and see what this thing is like out on the road. And I do spy some nice shifter extensions as well. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get all sorted and then uh, head on out. drove the T-Rock, um, it was actually still being run in, so I couldn't really experience what it was like. <laughs> um, obviously, foot flat on the floor, because it was pretty much brand new, the car. Yeah. Um, but I think this is kind of where the trends are going now, something a little bit bigger, but still with Everybody's there. extreme power, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got like stuff like the RSQ3 from Audi, obviously yeah. the T-Rock, um, and now this first impressions I mean we've driven a little bit in comfort which we're going to go back to now um, it's so easy to drive isn't it? yeah this this so easy it's so almost comfy. almost too comfortable and these seats as well two and a half grand well spent I think <laughs> they're so they can literally just unlimited amount of miles in these yeah yeah um, no I mean the bolsters on the side as well it just works yeah really you don't just don't move no exactly really really good um, I presume you use this as a daily ride. Yeah, this is any car, yeah. yeah. It's the kind of car where it's good in every single it's scenario. Yeah, it ticks every box. I think when I drove the T-Rock, I think I mentioned that this kind of car is the perfect car for someone who's who likes a bit of power, who is a petrol head, straight across, right? Yeah. Um, but has just had a family or something, or wants something that's a little bit more spacious. Yeah. Um, like just pootling around at the moment. You would know that it's got like 400 newton meters of torque and it's really quiet. Yeah, 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 it's really, really nice. You don't have to worry about shopping or anything. Yeah, that's it. I mean, with your bath, <laughs> that was a that was a nightmare, and the fuel tank as well. And the noise, the drone was just yeah, it got too much to be honest. Yeah, I mean, what was it? 35 liter fuel tank on 35, that. 35, yeah. And this is 65. Yeah. <laughs> so you're definitely living the luxury life now. <laughs> um, it's not that much to fill up. I mean, V power cost me. 60 quid. Especially at the moment. Yeah. Pretty cheap. Really good. Mm. Make most of it. Yeah, definitely. And obviously the car is fully running, um, yeah. which is good. It probably didn't take you very long to run it in. No. It, <laughs> I think a lot of cars nowadays don't probably don't need that much to be running, but yeah, but exactly, this was yeah. just unbelievable. I suppose if you're using it daily as well, then it's yeah. kind of, um, it racks up pretty quickly. Now, because this car is a 2020 model, it is fitted with particular filters um, which actually my M140i was um, dreaded with until I basically ripped it out <laughs> but still you do get a bit of sound I mean it is a two litre so it's not going to be the loudest thing in the world but I noticed on the downshift you do get a few little pops and bangs yeah. I assume that's got better as yeah, it's yeah. running um, yeah it sounds good Stop and no, 
supposed to sit quite high up. Yeah. But like, um, it is kind of bizarre to be in a car which you think is a hot hatch, but it's kind of not because you're that much higher. It's a bit, yeah, it's a bit of both really mixed together, isn't it? In mm, terms I suppose of the, you've gone from probably one of the smallest hot hatches <laughs> to. <laughs> so like I feel like it's still kind of the same sitting position. Oh really? It's, it's so high up in the above. Yeah, so I suppose like it is sitting on top of it. A little box, isn't it? Mm. Now, when I was doing the walk around, I did get a little bit confused with all the different packs on this, and because obviously you yeah. expect it, you're probably a lot yeah, more familiar. Yeah, yeah. So the sound and comfort pack is well, obviously the, the speakers. Yeah, the Beats sound system. Beats sound system. Electric tailgate mm -hmm. and heated seats. They're the main ones. I think there's a couple of other small bits. Yeah. Sort of the lane lane assist with the in the mirrors where it lights up and all that. Oh yeah, where well, you've um, got like a blind spot. Yeah, thing, yeah, but. that sort of little bits. Um, yeah, then obviously design is all gloss black interior, mm -hmm. uh, 19-inch alloys, yeah, and the bronze, the brakes as well. The brakes, yeah. It does corner pretty well, you know. It's really, really good. <laughs> it's surprising, you know. Yeah. Really surprising. I always say you just have to drive it to experience it. Yeah, yeah, that, exactly. So it's the kind of car which I didn't really have much expectation about because yeah. when I drove the T-Rock, it was only for well, it was quite brief. Um, so I didn't really have that much time to really get used to it, but having a proper spin in yours, which I'm very thankful for, thank you, um, is pretty cool. And I think that this kind of car is, like I said, perfect for someone who needs a family car, <laughs> but also needs some power. <laughs> yeah, it goes off road. And it goes off road. So you've also got all the yeah, you've got <laughs> all the different driving modes here. So yeah, off road mode and snow mode, which I don't think we'll need right now. Yeah, it's the kind of car which kind of excels in every scenario, like I've mentioned before. Yeah. You'd have to try launch control as well. I think we might have to try that. <laughs> Let's get off this dual carriage and give it a go. That's nice. Look at that. Oh. That's a spec. There's a hell of a lot of nice cars around. Yeah. Well, where I am, there's absolutely nothing, but that is, well, he obviously doesn't know how to use a roundabout lane. Don't get his BMW. <laughs> yeah, <no>? true. <laughs> Don't even try. Don't even try. <laughs> no, that is a lovely spec. Indicator's optional extra. Yeah, right, yeah, right? yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's that initial kick, you isn't it? You see what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That's surprising. <laughs> oh, mate. And that's the first time you've experienced that in the passenger seat as well. Yeah, it's all over the effing. <laughs> it's fine, it can be bleeped. No, that initial kick is astonishing. It's, it's, now you know what I'm, what I'm talking Yeah. About. It's a, oh. Probably throws you back as well, yeah. doesn't it? It real uh, kicks you yeah. like, all right, you're on it. Yeah, that's, that surprised me a bit. And obviously, as you'd expect from um, a Vagrant car, there's zero wheel spin at all. Oh, that's, that's so good. That's but it doesn't off. feel like this five, five and a half, whatever the seconds that Cooper keeps saying. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what we're saying because where I found online, it's five and a half. Yet you're saying that there's been some software updates with the 2020 car. Yeah, so it's four point nine. Point the fours, yeah. But then some people have online have been getting four and a half. It's yeah. Very, sort of very varied, really. I mean, every car manufacturer, almost, um, they do underestimate. Yeah. The normal to sixties in case they they do it where they say oh yeah it does it three seconds and then someone does it and it's three and a half <laughs> yeah it's normally the Italians isn't it yeah normally yeah <laughs> two but, and a half seconds yeah I mean the gear changes are just effortless aren't they That's so good, as you'd though. imagine especially the old the uh, paddle extensions yeah thing, just yeah they feel good it. actually really good mm. it's the kind of car where you just feel very confident in yeah I don't know if you feel that way as well but yeah you feel feel invincible. <laughs> yeah. I mean you get a little bit of lag but <laughs> a little bit but it's... you get to like I don't know maybe 3000 rpm and then you're gone. Yeah. No it's fun. I like it. I like, I like it, it a lot. How does it compare to the T-Rock then? So that's an interesting one. Um, very similar. Yeah. Very very similar. I think the sound on the T-Rock was a little bit more amplified because it had the Acropovic. Yeah. Um, which can get on this but you can but you have to buy the limited edition yeah, one so. which is like <laughs> 45 grand and that's the starting price yeah i mean this is 42 the, and this yeah. is fully spec jeez and you pretty much don't get anything else other than the acrophobic exhaust yeah yeah <laughs> but i mean other than the sound it does feel very very similar because yeah. i mean this 
arguably shares a lot of components. Yeah. I mean, even though the interface up here is different, it mm. still is the same tech. If you go that way, yep. it will link back to where we've just come. Lovely jubbly. This is the kind of car where you don't have to worry about scraping. <laughs> I mean, with the Abarth, that was seriously that was low, that was. <laughs> And that was a bit of a weapon, that thing. Um, but anyway, yeah, I think that's probably going to wrap things up for today. Um, really cool to compare this to, like I said, its direct rival and to see, well, if it is really just a hot hatch on steroids or on stilts, which it kind of is. It's got yeah. the power, it's got the torque. Yes, it's got the weight, but it certainly doesn't feel slow. Um, and I mean, if I was starting a family, then something like this would be perfect, to be yeah. honest. Um, but thank you very much to yourself for, well, once again, coming on the channel. Um, let me uh, take the wheel and, um, and experience it and of course I will leave your Instagram down in the description down below for you guys to go and check out. I understand there's probably going to be some modifications to it. Mm, potentially, potentially. Potentially. I mean if it's we'll anything see. like the Abarth then it's going to be a bit of a beast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I suppose because the car's so new there's so little out there. There's n pretty much nothing out yeah. there other than just a standard tune. But Yeah you can get stage one. I yeah I'm always sort of, oh, I, I quite like to know what I'm doing really. Exactly. Yeah. Cooper specific things, but mm -hmm. I know there's a Ram Air induction out for it, but yeah, that's about it. I mean, yeah, I suppose it's a lot of trial and error, and actually, it has just started raining, which is perfect. <laughs> Same, it's not snowing, so we can put it in no, snow mode. It's a shame, isn't it? <laughs> um, anyway, that's going to wrap things up for today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, please make sure you leave a like and make sure to subscribe for all the adventures.